Good afternoon, everybody. On this two two was it two 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 Tuesday? So like super Tuesday. <sighs> Hope everybody's having a good day. It is Chupacabra time. Call it the Tupacabra in honor of Tuesday. And it's kind of exciting because we finally get to use some new colors. We have a few new colors that we get to add to our floss organizer. So these here are the DMC color codes for all of them. Um, but I've just been picking them out as and when I need them. Um, and so far, these are the only colors that we've used. So now, oh, let me just make sure this is up here. Yeah, so now this is what we are working on. Let me move this guy over here. So we're going to prep. Here's our ultimate floss wheel, all of the flosses. So we're gonna add some green to this party. DMC 934 and 936 to be exact. So this one, it looks like I've already used in a previous color. So I will take off the pieces that I already have and then we'll cut some more if we need to. So yeah, I've been playing a game with myself today. Um, why do I have a headache? Do you ever do that when you're like, okay, what is the origin of the headache? Is it dehydration? Is it hormones? Is it um, allergies, hay fever? Is it barometric pressure? I don't know if you guys get barometric pressure headaches. Is it that? Um, what are the other culprits? Oh yeah, like muscle pain, like neck tension, spasm, stress. Realize that apparently having celiac disease, glutening can also cause headaches. So yeah, I've been playing that game with myself today. And I don't know what the cause is, but you just try to treat all of them, eh? So that's why I'm wearing my glasses today. Apparently, according to the optometrist, I don't actually need them for cross-stitching. I need them for seeing things further away. Um, but maybe my eyeballs are tired, so we're trying that as well. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, so I have prepped the chupacabra, the tupacabra, um, his home. The other day, I finished him yesterday while I was on a, like, actually both the movies I think came out in the 2000s. I was on a 2000s movie, music-centric movie kick. Because what I really wanted to watch was Empire Records. I own the DVD. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, but instead, I ended up on the streaming services. Because I'm pretty sure I saw it on Prime. So I was like, well, if it's on Prime, I'll just watch it that way. So I don't have to, I don't know, change. I don't have to remove the, uh, the, um, so I don't have to remove Daria from my DVD player. I'll just watch it on there. But I, uh, it wasn't on there, but High Fidelity was, and I was talking about it before, how I watched the series, like they did like a TV show remake of it, and it, it only lasted a season, but I feel like it needs more. I feel like it deserves more. And especially after watching the original and seeing how many references the TV show was making to the original film, like sometimes like line for line stuff. I think it deserved more. Did I put those in the right place? Yes, I did. Okay. Last thing I want to do is put my, organize my floss, but then don't actually put them in the right places. So yeah, so I watched High Fidelity, which I loved, but it makes me just ache for uh, another season of the TV show. 
And then I also watched Almost Famous, the Kate Hudson, Patrick Fugit, um, was it, what's the guy's name? The director, it's sort of like a semi-autobiographical movie of his. And that was very enjoyable. I feel like 2000's Patrick Fugit um, is my, was my like super crush because he's in some of my other favorite movies, uh, which is Saved, which is like this weird B movie um, starring Jenna Malone and Macaulay Culkin and Mandy Moore. Mandy Moore plays this like uber bitch and she does a really good job, sort of like when she was that mean girl in the first Princess Diaries. Um, so that was really good. That was another one he's in. And then he's also in White Oleander, which is another of my favorite movies. So yeah, I think I'm just a, I don't know if I'm a Patrick Fugit stan now. Like, I don't know what he's done recently. So I don't know if my Patrick Fugit standing is only within the 2000s. If that's where my, my loyalties to him start and end. But yeah, super into that. So we'll see. I will eventually get around to watching Empire Records again because I feel like there would be lots of really awesome quotes in there that I could use for blurps, which if you don't know, to be fair, I already have um, one of them as a blurp, but those are the options. Hello, Beaver. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're having a fabulous two, 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 two Tuesday, super Tuesday. It is the ultimate Tuesday. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Lurk away. Okay, let us start. Let us start. Okay. So I figure the easiest place to start seems to be the bottom of the cryptids and working our way up. That seems to be the easiest I am finding. So we shall do that. Um, yeah. What else? I don't know. But yeah, gotta rewatch. I actually re listened to the Empire Records soundtrack. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> ESS posh check. It's there. It's impeccable for now. Gotta test. There we go. I feel I feel taller. Jeez, you realize how much I slouch when you look at like where my camera is and now that I've like stood up straight, sat up straight. How much different it is. <laughs> it's about time you got here, eh? I'm glad you're here. You're gonna have some uh, cozy cross stitching time with me. You're actually my 59th follower, so we're actually one follower away from 60, which is very exciting. Very, very exciting. I'm almost like low-key wondering if maybe I should set a goal to reach 100 followers by my birthday. I think that would be really exciting. That would be a really fun birthday present. Okay, there's lots of A's in the 222 Pacabra. So I just want to make sure that I'm starting this on the right one. Third one. So yes, I've renamed the Chupacabra the Tupacabra in honor of this Super t t t Tuesday. Now it's time to focus. It's always like super nervy oh, when you go to start something that's not attached to something else because you got to make sure it's in the right place. Do, do, do. Right. 
two, and then we start on the third one. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> I hope you're having a fabulous day, <laughs> Mrs. Bullshi. Fabulous work from home day. Okay, so we're gonna start on the bottom. So I know I got all excited about adding some new colors, some green to our Tupacabra but he is still predominantly black floss. We are still predominantly in our DMC 310 moment. So we will get there, we'll get to the new fun colors, but we need to set our foundation first. Oh yes, so I've added new rewards and stuff for my T tokens, so as you gain T tokens, we have some options. Um, for that, we are drinking our Smuggler's Brew Tea in our favorite mug. Ooh, it's like the right temperature as well. I'm probably going to get stitching tea, but it's like that right temperature where it's not too hot, but it's still like warm as you drink it. So, <laughs> don't know who's going to give you that training. Hmm. The tea is nice and warm. I don't know if we will be uh, blessed with a um, shadow appearance on stream today because his very bestest friend in the whole wide world is home. So that's who he's hanging out with at the moment. But we might, we might get, you know, he might grace us with his pledge, his presence, his presence, presence. Yeah, tell him. Tell Mr. Bull she stick the kettle on. It's tea time. Liam had to step out uh, to be in Q today, to the hardware store today. And Shadow was not happy about it. He sang me the sweet, sweet howling sounds of his people. So... He is very, very attached at the moment. But it's all right. I'm only the one who feeds him and walks him 90% of the time. But, like, it's it's cool. <laughs> I'm okay with being second best. For now. So we start in the feet. Speaking of shadow... We're gonna have to, I know like, stream's just starting, but I'm already like dropping, dropping knowledge about other things, but our Thursday needle felting stream is gonna be moved to Friday uh, because Shadow is taking a much needed trip to the groomer and that's happening around stream time. So just to make it easier for myself and everybody, I'll just move it. And we will continue needle felting our little dormouse who as of right now kind of looks like a fox but we're working on it we are working on it so again i'm not setting too high expectations we probably will not get him finished by the end of stream but we will put in a large chunk of processing time into this guy and then we'll see how that goes i'm really excited like as much as obviously i love the cryptids themselves i love all these little like additions to help fill out the frame so this little skull man i just thought he was super cute he was really fun to stitch i feel like he'd make a really cute stamp like if somebody did like a stamp or like a sticker i think he'd be a really cute sticker so that was fun. There's lots of other little skulls. Like Mothman has some skulls too. I didn't realize actually that these were supposed to be outlined until I did this one. So I was like, oh crap. So I had to go back and make these boys pop. How is your crocheting adventure going? 
Are you taking requests yet? I would like a slouchy beanie. <laughs> Hopefully, music settings are all right. I think because I'm sort of like battling a bit of a headache right now, if any of them start getting too bassy and getting too lo-fi, we might have to swap them. I did notice that we had free access to the classical channel, which I was debating because it might still give me like the vibe I'm after, but they won't necessarily be chill. So my teacher had to get yeah, you can't mess up the bougie wool. You gotta start small. I hope your teacher has patience for you. <laughs> All right. I hope all of my friends who had to deal with various storms happening around the world are have survived, are safe, are thriving. Because so I feel like as much as Storm Eunice was happening around the UK, I was seeing bits and pieces that there was stuff happening in the US as well. So I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. Ooh, found the YouTubers. Oh, really cool. That's helpful. I know I started needle felting. I had to look at videos because I there weren't any visuals in the kit that I bought and I desperately needed like someone to walk me through it. <laughs> but yeah, so storms and things, we're doing all good. We lost, well, our neighbors lost a fence panel. And so that had opened up our garden to their little Frenchie. I don't know if I've already talked about this, but uh, they have a French bulldog next door named Barney. And he popped around to say hello to Shadow. And Shadow wasn't quite sure what to make of him. They sort of, Barney sort of like full on chased him around the garden for a little bit. So we had to install or like erect a, a little fence barrier for him so they could keep themselves separated. But other than that, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I feel like everybody was super prepping for Storm Eunice. And now that that's come and gone, I feel like we're just getting, like, it's still, still hella blustery, still hella windy, like, just one after the other. And people say that. <laughs> yeah, but... It was weird too because I took Shadow for um, our our standard our standard W A L K our pre stream walkies, and uh, and we went out and it was like kind of like lightly raining and windy, but I was like, we have to go. Like I'll just tough it out. It's fine. So probably for about you know a couple blocks, we got. You know, you know that misty rain that you don't realize you're soaking wet until, you know, 10 minutes in. And then it stopped and the sun came out and we completely dried off. And then as we were heading back, it started to rain again. So you really can't predict what's going on. It's also been super humid and like warm as well. So you want to bundle up for this wind, but it's actually like a quite a warm wind. So I always find that really, like, I don't know how to dress for that sort of weather. But I don't leave the house very often, so it's not really my biggest problem. Another exciting thing about the fact that I have to take Shadow to the groomer is that beside the groomer is a hobby craft. So I can finally pick up some red thread, some like red, just like sewing thread. And I can finally finish uh, my little mushroom pins that we made together. 
because I didn't want to put the pin badges on the back of them just with like white thread and have that contrast. So those should be ready to go by Friday. I know I'm gonna work, we're definitely gonna work on our dormouse on Friday stream, but maybe on another stream we will finish finish what we started with our little with our toadstool pins we'll see though we'll see how it goes one two three four five six seven <laughs> you have procured the tea. <laughs> uh oh, if it's specifically Mr. Bullshit tea, that means he's tampered with it, hasn't he? Or the tea is the make yourself your own tea tea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Let's now go this way. So we got one leg. We're gonna do the second leg. Then once we get um, a little bit of this body body sorted, I will read the little description that Witchy Stitcher has curated about our chupacabra, which I always find really interesting. I think this one because so far, I believe all of our cryptids have been based in the U.S. Um, so I'm excited when we're going to start getting to our international cryptids. So I think the chupacabra might be one of them. But I am not certain. And hopefully. Hmm. Make sure we're doing all right. <laughs> yes exactly it's a lot of counting I think especially too because this is linen it's counting two over two as well so it's not just like I don't know everything is multiplied but everything is also smaller so it takes a little bit of concentration I'm just trying to think kind of what else happened this week on Sunday, we went to a friend's place. Actually, this is, we went to visit some friends. We had lunch over around theirs, and they have two dogs. And Shadows met these dogs, but he met them when he was, like, roughly six months old. Uh, so this was him seeing them again. And I think, too, last time, because we were out in the garden, they didn't, like, they weren't in kind of close quarters. And I think some of them just kind of, like, one of them kind of just kept to himself. 
But, of course, we were all in this house together. And, yeah, it was just really interesting. I think both of them, so Shadow, the other two dogs are named Henry and Ebony. And I think Henry and Shadow wanted to play together, but they kind of didn't know how. And the way that our friend's house is arranged, like, Shadow's just basically, he basically almost just fits in our house. So, with London, or with the UK, you know, tiny homes are, like, a thing. Definitely compared to, like, Canadian houses and U.S. houses, what you get for your, for your dollar. So, uh... (laughs) He didn't really have any room to get his zoomies out or run around or anything. Um, so he had a lot of pent-up energy. And w- and his way of playing with other dogs so far is really just, like, run around and chase me. But when you're in, like, a two-up, two-down house, like, you can't really do that. There's no running around. Um, so he was a little bit stuck out. But he did pretty good, considering... Also, um, he's much taller than them. I think one's like a toy poodle and the other one's like, um, like one of those sort of like golden doodles, but like a small, a small, basically just like, you know, small and like smallish medium floofy dogs. So Shadow was definitely the biggest one there. So he also, uh, got into a bit of shenanigans as well because, you know, if you're not used to, you can be used to having dogs, but if you're not necessarily used to having tall dogs you don't realize um, how appetizing your counter space is. So he got caught out a few times when he was jumping up on their counter, so we had to tell him off. And then eventually we just had to be like, guys, like, you can't keep things up here. Like, we need to clear it off for everyone's safety. More for him, because, like, you know, we want to have a nice evening. We don't want to have to worry about him. We don't want to tell him off and all that kind of stuff. So, but... Yeah, it was fun. So we thought he would. To be fair, I think if he, they had, like, a big open field to run around in, I think they would have had a lot of fun together. But because Shadow had nowhere to run, he was like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to play. I don't know how to. Yeah, he isn't really. His instinct for playtime is running. And if there's nowhere to run, then he's like, I don't know what to do. So we'll get there. We'll have to have them all around ours. Not like there's much more room for running around, but. So I'm just gonna figure out where we're gonna park this thread. There we go. But he's doing all right. I just got a text from Liam. Apparently he's sleeping. He's sleeping downstairs. That's usually how it works because if we, we have a routine. We have our post dream walkies, then we have our post walkie dentist stick, and then after that we have our little post snooze. So he usually snoozes while I'm streaming because if he doesn't, then he's a little bit of a psycho. That only happened to us once. We made that mistake because I was tired and decided that both of us were gonna have a nap together. And then I woke up just in time to start streaming. And he was like, well, I'm awake now. So it's time to play. It's time to run around. It's time to get into shenanigans and get all the attention. And I was like, I'm, I'm trying to do a thing. But he doesn't care. <laughs> He's like, I don't care what you're trying to do. You're just talking to the, in- like, you're talking to the air. That's not, that's not important. Come play with me. He did that today. Liam got a phone call. And he was talking to somebody. And Shadow was very confused. He's like, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. You're just talking to the air instead of paying attention to me. So. The fun thing that happened with Storm Eunice is for like two seconds one day we got hail. So Shadow got to experience hail for the first time. And he didn't know, quite know what to make of that. <laughs> Luckily it was like tiny pieces of hail that like melted pretty quickly. Because there's only been one instance. I have a like a visceral memory of coming home from a friend's birthday party. And I think this was, if this is the specific friend I remember, it was like July. So I don't know, it was just like this freak hail storm in the middle of July. And I remember having like a party hat on cause I came from like the kind of fun zone arcade or something and like literal ice cube chunks of hail were coming down. And I remember them like falling and like hitting me on my party hat and it like being uncomfortable. So. I don't, I have yet to experience hail of that size ever again. 
to the point where part of me almost thinks that my brain made it up. You know, when you experience something, but it's just like never happened again. You're like, it was that real? Another one was in my childhood home. Um, it was all fenced in. And I remember, I have a memory of it snowing so much that we could, it was obviously so packed densely that we could just walk right over the fence with our sleds. Even though, like, they were proper, you know, like, probably the height of me. So maybe, like, five, like, you know, you could see over them. So I want to say maybe, like, a five-foot fence. And I was, I had, I had this memory of it snowing so much that we were able to just walk right over it. Don't know if I made it up in my brain. I don't think I did. But it just seems, like, so illogical of something to happen. <laughs> Oh, that's all right, Beaver. I'm glad you're still here, though. Yeah, we're doing all right. I said I was playing the uh, game What's Causing My Headache today. So I had a little bit of uh, investigative, you know, symptom management today. But other than that, I've been pretty good. How are you? How's your, your morning, your work morning going so far? Hopefully all right besides you know being rudely interrupted <laughs> how dare work actually make you do work at work that's just how rude of them <laughs> make sure i didn't lose track of where this is yeah right honestly yeah don't ever google your symptoms it's like, mm, no, this and this happened. Mm. Yeah, how many how many cups of coffee are you down so far? I'm trying to think. I have my morning coffee, and then I've had, I think this is my third cup of tea today. So after this, I'm definitely switching to my decaf. But I figured, because, you know, we stop at four-ish, but I had enough time to, to squeeze in some more caffeine before then. Because I think I needed it. Ah, ooh, must be wired, unless your body is, like, so used to it. I can't remember. I had a Red Bull, like, years and years ago. I think because I am so sensitive to caffeine, and I stay very, very far away from that. It was so funny. I remember in um, the 11th grade, we were coming back from, a, like, a, a school trip, and we had a bunch of friends that had because we were not we weren't getting home until like one in the morning or something. So a bunch of our friends before we got on the bus grabbed monster energy drinks. <laughs> uh that's funny. <laughs> Some people literally don't have they're not impacted by caffeine at all, and it blows my mind. But, so, hey, man, like, if it helps wake you up, but you're still able to function and go to sleep, then awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, so we were getting in um, from the, the bus at, like, 1 in the morning or something like that. So, in order to stay awake, a few of our friends had energy drinks. And one of my closest friends had never had one before. And so, she took, like, I don't know if she finished a full one or if she took a few sips of our friend's one. And she honestly, like, she was getting delusional. Like, she had, like, random fits of laughter. She was so exhausted. Like, she started crying. Like, she just experienced all of these emotions just by, like, being sleep-deprived and having, like, a few sips of this energy drink. So I think after that happened, it, like, kind of low-key scarred her for life. And uh, she never... And she, like, stayed so far away from caffeine, would only do tea, wouldn't do coffee. Now she has two kids, so, like, she needs... She's like, I drink coffee now to function because I have, you know, two kids under the age of two. So life changes force the need, I guess, but... Yeah. Wow. I know, the fact that you don't have a set up time. To be fair, like, tea does still have caffeine in it, but not nearly as much as the energy drinks. <laughs> yeah mm. 
Are you a fan of tea at all, Beaver? Or are you just kind of like, you're not, you're almost like not a warm beverage person. I guess maybe like, cause some like soda pop, pop has like caffeine in it, but I don't know if it, what the levels of it are comparatively to like a cup of coffee or something. My brother like stays away from caffeine and stuff. Um, and so it was really funny when he like got into the work world especially because, you know, office culture, everyone's like, oh, I'm stepping out to like grab everybody coffees or teas and things. Do you want anything? Especially from like Tim Hortons. He's like, oh, I'm going to Tim's. Do you want anything? And he'd be like, can I have an orange juice? And they're like, this 20 year old man is asking for an orange juice from the coffee shop. But like, he doesn't drink tea. He doesn't drink coffee. He doesn't drink like any of that kind of stuff. So he's like, one juice, please. And I'm like, why not, man? Like, why not? But everyone looked at him sideways, like, what a strange request for the tea coffee run. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Matcha, yeah, especially, like, green tea, especially depending on how it's steeped. If it's steeped for too long, it can be, t like, quite bitter and needs, like, a little bit of extra. I usually put a bit of honey in my green tea to, like, circumvent if I accidentally oversteep it and it gets too bitter. I haven't had matcha in a really long time, actually. I haven't had, I used to do matcha tea lattes. But again, like, I don't know how legit that is. It's like when I had a chai tea latte the other day and it was just like a syrup. So it was like chai flavor syrup. And I was like, a part of me kind of died a little. I was like, oh, oh, this isn't, this isn't what I think it is. But it was still very tasty. I was just kind of like, this isn't real. <laughs> Nothing about this is real. So I don't know if the matcha ones would be any realer. Mind you, I think it is a powder. Because this was Muffin Break. And Muffin Break had the syrup. Whereas I think the Starbucks ones are a powder. But I don't actually know, like, what's in it. If it is actually, like, the chai tea or if it's just, like, powder. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, we love tea here. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, we don't spill the tea. No. No, not not the salacious tea, just the warm, comforting beverage tea. Cozy tea, not not salacious tea. Hello, Vince. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I saw I think you're streaming later tonight, right? What time? Mm, yeah. The only thing I like about black tea, well, it depends because if you go to like places like T2 or like David's Tea in Canada and stuff like that, you can get like flavored black teas and some of them are actually really sweet. So I have um, something called New York Breakfast and English uh, and Melbourne Breakfast. So Melbourne Breakfast is like vanilla flavored black tea and New York Breakfast is almost like pancakes. And like, so it's like kind of like sugary sweetness sort of black tea. Um, but yeah, just straight up black tea on its own can be quite bitter. That's a lot though. Like, do you want some tea with that milk and sugar? <laughs> to Google matcha. Mrs. Bullshit, it's like powdered green tea. 2030, okay. Will I be awake? 8.30, okay. <laughs> I'll try to stop by, because I feel like a lot of times people will be streaming and I'll be like, I'm getting ready for bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's an important question because once the sun goes down, my brain literally shuts off. It's like, mm, no, that's it. Even if my body is still physically awake, my brain is like, no, no, bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Can be. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know if uh, you bring the the cozy, calm bedtime vibes though, Vincent. That's the only thing. <laughs> Might be all right that you'll keep me awake longer. <laughs> yeah. It's like after dinner, I take my designated space on the sofa, lie down, and do not leave there until it's time for me to go to bed, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Vince, what are you playing? What's geared up for stream tonight? Or even just in general? <laughs> okay so we got our little feet and now we're just making a little tail excuse me I request instrumental only pretzel. What the hell was that? Pretzel Rock be trying to add words to my instrumental re request. That is a thing. Yeah, ASMR, that's not something that I personally um, am very cozy about. That's not, that's not my vibe, but some people find that relaxing. But if your whole goal is to create create a cozy stream vibe for me personally, no, ixnay on the ASMRA. Does it? Yeah, I find I think that's what it happens with me too. Cause there's like the dry there's like dry noises and wet noises and like the whispering like it just mm -mm. makes me a bit uneasy. <laughs> I saw actually, um, I think it's actually one of our friends, Angelic Dreamer. She um, has a tag in her streams for visual ASMR. So I don't know if that's, because she crochets and knits and stuff, if like the visual calmness of like crafting maybe. So I've actually, I have to look more into that, but I've never actually saw the term until I saw it posted on her stream. So... That would be something maybe I'm more into is the visual ASMR as opposed to the auditory ASMR. I think that would be more my vibe. <laughs> yeah, your view history sort of runs a, a full range. But I think you could call those all different satisfying. Who, me? <laughs> I'm a decent, well, I can multitask to a degree. I'm surprised we haven't had to uh, frog any of this yet. But the day is still young. Stream is still young. One, two, three, this one, go. okay. <laughs> There we go, got our little chupacabra tail, our tupacabra. Okay, so you do like a variety stream. <laughs> Girl, your brain, maybe like in terms of task, but I feel like your brain has like 25 tabs open at any one time, and so I call that multitasking. You may not be physically multitasking, but I feel like you as a person are just a multi, a, a mental multitasker. <laughs> Whereas my brain can't do that. I can, I can talk and stitch at the same time, but I can't have multiple thoughts bouncing around in my brain at any one time. Okay. 
Um, what are we doing? This. <laughs> oh, yeah? You say 50, 57 tabs? No wonder you go to bed at nine, Beaver, if, that, if your brain has more than 25 tabs open at any one time. I'm like, I too would be mentally exhausted <laughs> after all of that. Oh. This slipped out. Yeah. Jeez, I haven't seen Halo in a hot minute. It's a throwback. Are you sure it's not Thursday, Vince? I feel like that's throwback Thursday stuff. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Thank you for redeeming the greetings and salutations, Vince. That's so exciting. I'm so glad that worked. That's what, that's from um, my one of my favorite movies, Heather's. We are not Heather's, we are all Veronica's. At least I think so. <laughs> Thank you for the redeeming of the points. There's a late, there's a new Halo, is that what this is? I thought Halo like, <laughs> it's you how much I know. Um, yeah, I thought Halo, like, was just, like, an early 2000s thing, and it's not a thing anymore. Okay. I believe you have, uh, Dej and Bobex to, uh, thank for those recommendations, Vince. <laughs> Keep track of what we're doing. Oh, tea break. Mm. It's past its like super comforting temperature. Still drinkable, still gonna finish it, but you know, it's not as satisfying as it usually is. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not ideal, but it's still, it's still drinkable. When I started stream, it was like the most perfect temperature where it was like warm enough to drink, but like soothing as you drank it, just warmed you all the way down. Now it's cold, but that's fine. All right. How we doing? Not too bad. <laughs> All right. Ooh, this is exciting because I think now we've set a base that we can finally use the new colors. This will be our first time using these colors in this stitch along. <laughs> Do it, go stick that kettle on, tea break. It's about that time where, you know, it's like four, you gotta push through the last like few hours before it's like the evening. So you need that, that tea or coffee to help get you through that point. Okay. 
see. There we go. He's looking good so far. He kind of looks low-key like a dinosaur, and he will probably continue to look like a dinosaur until his completion. So nothing wrong with that. Let's park them this way. So what I'm doing essentially is once I get to the end of, or like roughly to the end of a bit of thread, uh, in order to make sure that it doesn't slip out and muck up all of the stitches, you like park it. So you stick your needle under the loops that you've made and then you pull the end through that. So that way you don't have to make any knots. So there's no like uneven lumpies and bumpies in your stitch but you know that the stitches aren't going anywhere. So that's what you do. <laughs> that's how you get through the streams, eh? Late night shenanigan pick me up. Listen here. Sometimes the thread likes to be temperamental and not do as it's told. There we go. And then we just have to teach it a lesson. There. And then just make sure that that's not too tight. Perfect. And part that there. Boom. Okay, let's switch to the green. Now I gotta figure out which. Oh, yay, on top. Thank you so much for the raid. Hello, hello. Hi, Racing Nay. Hi, on top. I hope you had a fabulous stream. How was it? How is it in VTuber land? Did you get up to many shenanigans? <laughs> Ooh, Positronics! Fellow YouTube, UK YouTube. Very exciting. Oh. <laughs> yes, please, stick your kettles on. Did that not work? Oh, did that one? I didn't hear that one. Okay, let's replay it. Nope, not that one. Huh. Okay, we'll try that one again afterwards. Maybe everyone else heard it, but I didn't. Cool. Okay, so I heard that one. Did everyone else hear Beaver's Redemption of I Myself Am Strange and Unusual? Because if not, we'll have to get that one checked out. Mm. Thank you. Yes, it's a pattern by the Witchy Stitcher. Um, it's the Cryptid Stitch Along. So right now we're working on the Chupacabra. I'm calling him. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, rude. Okay. Damn it. I might have to like fix cooldown times on these so then I can like replay them afterwards. I'll replay them once they, so you don't have to use your, um, your T tokens. I'll replay them so that you can hear them. But they're on 10 minute cooldowns. So once that's done, I will redeem them for you. Ooh, how long has it taken so far? <laughs> Considering that I think I started it in June of last year. Then my puppy ripped a hole in it, so I had to fix it. <laughs> and then, um, I started it back up again, January, February. So 
Yeah, it's been a hot minute. <laughs> but I worked on the frame for a good few hours. So I feel like every... I don't want to speculate because I work on this... Who? want to say probably, like you said, eight, between 8 and 10 hours, 8 to 12 hours probably per section. That's my estimate. I'm really bad at judging how long it takes to do things. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good, though. So I reached out to my Witchy Stitcher community, and they instructed me on how to fix it. So I don't know if you can tell on this, which is good because the point is not to be able to tell that there was a hole here, but through the magic of basically reweaving the linen with end pieces of the fabric, I was able to close up the hole. So yeah, so it's, we redeemed it. Um, he hasn't touched it since, but every time he like goes near and sniffs it, I'm like watching you. Yeah, so I'm super excited with how it turned out. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've not, I've never experienced, um, doing the kinds of cross stitches that have the actual pattern pre-printed on it. I don't know if you've ever done any of those beaver, but yeah, I've never done it. I skipped, I skipped straight to hard mode, jump straight into hard mode. Oh, uh, I bet Positronics, if it's like a really big piece of art, um, like of coloring art, I'm sure that takes a hot minute and your hand gets really sore too, depending on like how much pressure you're putting on with your coloring pencils so yeah I bet I know I don't know how like I've seen photos of people that are like sitting on the tv or sitting in front of the tv not on the tv stitching and they have like their fur babies like curled up on their lap and stuff and I'm like how how did you get to that point where like the puppo or the cat is just so chill that it's not trying to eat your thread I don't know. Let me figure out. Okay. Nine, three, four. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do another color. Let me check the cool down time on this. Four minutes. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard mixed things. I've not seen very many of them. It's just a lot of counting and a lot of like staring and just like, I don't know. And then of course when you mess up, which I ultimately do a lot of the times, you just have to like pull it out and start again. Yeah. Exactly. I know. The other day actually I tried um, cross stitching while sitting on the sofa. I think because I was just having a day where I just wanted to be really close to Shadow and just like I wanted to snuggle up with him but I think he's very aloof like he wants to sort of get snuggled but in his own way so I basically just wanted him to like sit on my lap even though he's a giant 24 kilo dog and just like snuggle with him but if he doesn't choose that life then he'll like get up and like move to another part of the sofa so instead I was like, well, I'll sit on the sofa and you can just like lay down and snuggle up beside me. And so we were sort of like snuggling, but like not really. I think like my feet were touching him and that was like, as I didn't want to push it. I didn't want him to get up and leave. I was like, I just want to be as close to you as possible without like spooking you. So yeah, I know for a dog that's like so clingy and needy, he's like only on my terms. He's like, I love you. I want to be around you 24 seven and never leave you alone. But don't you dare try to snuggle me. Like, so yeah, I didn't want to jinx it. So that was as close as I got. But to be fair, he was already like in post walkie sleep mode. So I think that was probably easier if I tried to do it like while he was in like super awake puppy play mode, I think we would have had some, some casualties. If not the stitch, 
hundred percent this. Like, I bet your cats would find this too tempting. Like, that just seems like, you know, a disaster waiting to happen. How many pups have you got, Beaver? Don't know if we already had this conversation, but if not, please continue. <laughs> Three. Yeah. Wow. Three puppos. I think the most, we have friends, two of our friends have two, like a set of two, but no one has three. One of my friends though, I think of her, um, partner didn't like keep her in line. She would adopt all of the doggos. So. <laughs> yeah. Can only imagine. <laughs> Can only imagine positronics. I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> Too tempting. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. We have made the first few stitches of our green floss. This is the first, like, sort of. I was gonna say sort of like he's colorful but still very like muted colorful cryptid actually why don't let me first check see if this is ready to go oh soon actually i'll read this and then probably by the time that happens we'll be good to go so let me read you so the witchy stitcher has been super awesome with all of the cryptids that get released so I don't know if I've explained this to you guys. So it's a stitch along. It's done now. But basically what happened is back in like June, she you would buy the cross stitch pattern without knowing what the whole thing was going to look like. So you knew the theme. So the theme obviously was cryptids. You saw this and you got the frame. And then each week she would release a second, like the next part of the pattern. And then eventually you slowly end up getting all of the pieces. So the stitch along is done now. A lot of people have already finished it. There's going to be 16 squares in total. Um, we're on five, so we have a long way to go. But um, so some people I think I've heard when they know about stitch alongs, they'll sometimes hold off until they get start to see the pattern before they decide if they want to invest in it or not. Um, I just jumped into this because I've never done one before. So yeah, so that's what we're working on. So the cool thing is every time the witchy stitcher was releasing another part of the pattern, a new cryptid, she would actually um, write like a little biography about the character. So we got to learn more about it if you're not like super into or, ha or super knowledgeable about cryptids, which I like pff, didn't know anything about. So I think this is actually our first international cryptid as well because all of these other ones are based in the US from what I was reading. So the Chupacabra, which I am calling the Tupacabra in honor of 2222222 Tuesday, the Super Tuesday, if you will. So, tales of a mysterious monster that sucks the blood of livestock have exploded in Mexico the U.S. Southwest, and even China. The chupacabra was first reported in Puerto Rico. The chupacabra has been described as either reptile or dog-like or a combination of both. It is mostly hairless and has a pronounced spinal ridge, usually pronounced eye sockets, fangs, and claws. This goat sucker, as its name translates from Spanish, has been credited with strange attacks on goats, sheep, rabbits, horses, and chickens. The attacks happen mostly at night, leaving the animals devoid of blood with, with oddly vampire-like punctures in their necks. So that is the chupacabra. I don't know if you remember. So a few years ago, me and um, Liam went down a rabbit hole and we started re-watching um, Jackie Chan Adventures, if you guys had ever seen or remembered that TV show. And I believe there's a part um, where they meet like El Toro, and I forget what the little boy's name was, who's like his, he like El Toro's his hero. Yeah, but they, um, I think at one point they do have to face off or they have to deal with the chupacabra. I remember them talking about it and stuff. 
It was so good. Such a good show. And, like, the theme song was amazing, too. Okay. Let me see. I think these ones are done. So, in honor of you, Beaver, you've redeemed this. Let me redeem it again for you. See if it works. W T F. Let's see if the other one works. <laughs> Jackie. Okay, so that one works. So for some reason, the other one doesn't. So we will have to work on that. We will fix that. Can I fix that right now? Open config, let us see. <laughs> oh, I love uncle. Such an underrated man. Maybe I can always turn them up. Let's edit these. Let's crank the volume. Let's preview. Don't worry. I don't have low self esteem. It's a mistake. I'll say I have low esteem for everyone else. There we go. I've cranked it on my end, so hopefully. And now let's make sure this one works. We'll crank this too. There we go. So it seems like this one works, but for some reason, there we go, we'll save this one. We know that one works. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, I'm using Blurp. So I have the Blurp software. That's what I'm using to play them. Um, I just cranked it on in the uh, in the app in the config. So hopefully now it's louder and we can do that. I wonder too if because the music is on, if the background music sort of like drowns it out. I don't know. We'll see. We've made we've made those changes. I've literally cranked the volume on them. So we'll see if that works. And if not, we will troubleshoot them. It's really exciting because I hear them. So I don't know why y'all like I hope you guys can hear them because they make me really happy. I hope they make you happy too. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much for the raid, Odd. Enjoy your breakfast. I hope it is tasty and yummy and wonderful. And I will talk to you later. Continue to lurk. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, so we just tested these. Yeah, so now it's saying that they're new. Okay. We shall see. But yeah, so they're using Blurp. Um, I don't know. Back to the topic at hand. We are doing some green on this chupacabra. But yes, love Uncle from Jackie Chan Adventures. Love the theme song. The theme song did not need to go that hard for us, but it is iconic. Maybe that should be another blurp that I add. 
go through like a crazy it's just gonna be like niche random like movie and tv show quotes Scroll back down to where we want to be. Okay. I also have, so in addition to some of those excellent blurbs, we have some other um, rewards. And one of them is actually um, guiding the raids. If you guys wanna save those up, you can actually determine who we're gonna raid at the end of stream. So that's cool. If not, I'll probably, like I'll take suggestions and stuff, but the channel point reward will essentially like void everyone else's suggestions and we'll just go with yours. But uh, we'll see if any of our friends are on at the end. We still got we still got loads of time. We still have loads of time together. Don't you worry. But just an option. Make sure we're keeping track of this. One, two, three. I think of other ones. So, like, besides Jackie, Daria is another one that I'm super obsessed with. That's another really good theme song, actually. And started watching the TV show, the animated Beetlejuice as well. That one, that's, like, a pretty standard. I think it's very similar um, theme song to the themes in the movie. I think Danny Elfman did both of them. That's another good one. There's also all these other like niche, um, not lots of them, but there's like another, a few niche like Canadian TV shows that they used to play. Like, so I'm not called the family channel. So it was a Canadian network television channel, but also would play a lot of the like Disney channel ones before we like, before we got an actual Disney channel channel, it was this one. And so mixed in with all of the Disney, um, TV shows, there would be sort of like in the same vein, but specifically kind of Canadian. Um, so one of them, I don't know if anybody, if this will ring a bell to anybody, but there was one called The Buzz on Maggie. And it was about, I think she was a fly or she was a little flea. And it was basically all these bugs, um, but set in like a high school. And so Maggie wanted to be like this little rock star. And the person who sings the theme song that's another theme song that didn't need to go that hard um and so sky sweetenham actually sings the theme song if anybody knows who that is that's another very distinctly canadian individual so that's probably some oncoming blurb options will be very like niche canadian sounds and options but yeah this is a decent one I like chill music that's not super bass heavy so I'm not a big like I don't mind lo-fi music but especially when you're in like a headache symptom management land having like a continual beat like baseline can grind your gears okay let's keep track of this Disney should found each other. Okay. 
I don't 100% know what you mean. Mrs. Bullshit. Something found each other. If you're talking about me, I'm glad you found me. I'm glad all my friends are here. Finish this tea. We're almost finished our first green accent and we'll add the rest of it. <laughs> ah, yes, the niches. Yes, all of the niche, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's another one that'll probably be, I think it's like Tommy says one and he's like, oh, I got sponsor billardies now. Sponsor billardies now. That's definitely one that I want to go back and rewatch. I want Nickelodeon to come out with like their own streaming service, like kin to Disney Plus, so we can just get all of the classic like 90s Nickelodeon things that and I also want some of like one of the platforms or like because I don't know how big they are but like Hanna-Barbera to release all of their things because I just every once in a while I get the urge to rewatch like all of the Scooby-Doo's specific ones and they're not all like they're never available on prime and sometimes i find them at like the movie store but not like i find them on sale at like hs smith wh smiths and things but not always the ones i want to watch so it would be super chill <laughs> if one of these streaming services could snatch them up or if hannah barbera could create their own because that would be super helpful for me personally. Okay, Captain Caveman. I remember there was one and I don't, I don't know what it's called, but everyone's would come on, on TV. And it was like when all of the Hanna-Barbera characters would get together, almost like Mario Kart style and they would race and there was a whole TV series about it. And it was all the different characters that would race around and there would be conflict and like the evil characters would try to like usurp all the other ones and stuff. And I remember being so entertained by it. But I, yeah. Okay, hang on. Two, three, on the fourth. One, two, three, on the fourth. I also I don't know was Rocky I think Rocky and Bullwinkle was also Hanna-Barbera as well those were the other two that I really enjoyed but yeah like those are things that weren't even it's like I'm nostalgic for these things that were around obviously before I was born but I would catch reruns of them There's like two different kinds of nostalgia, isn't there? There's like nostalgia for things that you experienced and then there's almost like nostalgia for things that you weren't necessarily around for, but you're like, I don't know, like you sort of romanticize the vibe that they gave off or something. Okay. 
This is looking like I accidentally hit like shift on his legs and scooched him over, but I promise you <laughs> this is all accurate. Blaze it. Okay. Yeah. That's true. I remember my friend, um, her dad actually as like a like an like a young adult or a child actually recorded episodes of Bugs Bunny on VHS because he wasn't sure if it would still be on by the time he had kids and he wanted to make sure that they, he would show, like, he could show them those. But it wasn't necessary because, like, Bugs Bunny just stood the test of time and they constantly make that. they That was on TV when we were growing up and constantly making that available so it wasn't necessary. But it was just really interesting to hear that, that it was like, I'm so invested or feel so passionately about how good this stuff is or how funny it is or how um influential it is for me that I want to make sure that I'm able to show this to my future kids don't know if there's anything like obviously like classic Disney and stuff but there's nothing that almost isn't available that I would feel the need to have to save like, I'd be able to find most things, I would think. I guess there will be, like, a bunch of, like, random niche kind of Canadian ones, but... Again, I think I could find them. Why is there, this is really unnerving. What is this laughter? There you go, it's done now. Every once in a while, there's like a song in the chill playlist on Pretzel Rocks that I'm like, this isn't chill, this is sort of unnerving. I think we need Swedish Berry Break. I had to, like, I wanted a snack before stream, but I really couldn't figure out what I wanted. But I wanted something, like, not super sweet, but, like, not super savory or whatever. So I just had a spoonful of peanut butter. Took out the middleman, didn't put it on toast, didn't, like, put it on crackers. Like, nothing just was, like, mm, just gonna. But I don't think it was enough. How are we doing? I'm doing all right. This is really exciting. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I don't need to make excuses. I just want the peanut butter. So what's the point in me getting a vessel for this? I think I might have if I already didn't have like toast or a bagel or something for breakfast. So I was like, I'm just going to put it on toast, but I've already eaten toast. So I might as well just. Might as well. But it was just a teaspoon. I probably should have taken a tablespoon. It was not big enough. When I look back and think about, like, how much I would have actually put on a slice of toast, it was not... It, I took a much smaller amount. <laughs> but we have... We still... I haven't burned through my Swedish berry stack, so I still have that for a little sugar boost. Now I have to focus a little bit because there's going to be like little accents of the black floss in this sort of green section. So it's not just a complete wash fill in. So shall require a little bit of concentration, but.
Mm -hmm. Making sure we're in frame. Posture. I am indeed the snack queen. have my uh, naps and snacks sweatshirt hoodie but I didn't need to wear it today because it's actually quite warm despite the fact that like it's so windy I was talking to Liam about this I was like it's so hard to figure out how to dress for this weather because despite the fact that it's so windy and rainy it's actually really mild out Just keeping it nice and chill today. Oh, super exciting. I'm probably at the end of stream, but my friend Jazzy did a stream where she, uh, yeah, honestly, shorts and jumper weather. Yeah. I know it's so interesting around this time of year because when you see people walking out, like walking outside, just the range of what people are wearing is so varied. You have people like that are wearing shorts and a t-shirt, like jogging, obviously. But sometimes, yeah, it's like shorts and a and a jumper. Or you have people in their like full blown winter gear. Then you have like somewhere in between. It's just a really random kind of chaotic time for for uh, apparel. But yeah, so my friend Jazzy did a giveaway for the first time, I think it was it last week, a few weeks ago, and I won. And so she sent me some stickers. And so she's from Florida. So we weren't sure how long it was gonna take to get here, but it arrived today, which is so exciting. She's not here on stream right now, but I'm still gonna open it on stream anyway, because I want to, I'm very excited about it. She found some specifically tea theme stickers for me and I'm going to stick them on the back of my laptop, which is very exciting. But yeah, so I don't think it took very long. I think maybe a couple of weeks, which is good to know because you never know when you're shipping things around the world, how long it's going to take. There's so many variations. It's like who's, you know, in charge of mailing it, um, if you're doing tracking or non-tracking, or if you're just like sticking it in the mailbox, what that's got kind of like. Because I think what I want to do is add the option um, on my, ooh, let me just, what am I doing? Sorry, let me figure out, let me figure out where we're at. Okay, yeah. So what I want to do is add a option for my subscribers to get a handwritten thank you note from me. I think that's what I'm gonna do, um, but I wanna sort of figure out how, like I don't want you to be waiting like months and months for it. And also depending on where in the world you need like different stamps and different amounts of stamps and whatever. I'm assuming I could just Google it, like go on like the Royal Mail website and be like, how many stamps do I need to send from here to, you know, Argentina or from here to the US or from here to Canada. I think that should be pretty easy to work out. But yeah, I think that is going to be something that I add to my subscriber rewards list. Because eventually, obviously, there will be emotes. I'm in the process of trying to procure those. I've asked my partner's cousin do you I, have, I was thinking about this because at what point do you start tacking the in-law like do you stop tacking in-law and everything because you obviously have like your mother-in-law your sister-in-law brother-in-law father-in-law but do you do like auntie-in-law and like cousin-in-law and like granddad-in-law I don't know so theoretically my cousin-in-law um, might be doing some emotes for me. I've asked her and she's interested. So we shall see. 
Um, I've also asked my brother's girlfriend. Well, I asked my brother to ask his girlfriend if she still draws and if that would be an option. So I'm trying to source because, you know, I know so many really cool, talented artists. And so if they would like to, I would like to work with them to provide y'all with some emotes instead of just going and, you know, I'm all for supporting, you know, people on Etsy, you know, random awesome artists there. But like if I know artists, I would like to support them. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But definitely that will happen at some point. But until then you get my love, you get potentially, I think, yes, a personalized thank you note from me and a um, subscriber badge so far. So. All tea themed, we got three, our three tiers have really awesome names. So we have the chamomile crew, tier one. We have the English breakfast bunch, which is tier two. And then the Earl Grey gang, which is tier three. I love it. I'm so excited. This is going to be like the tea, the most tea centered, tea centric themed channel. Hello, hello, Dej. Welcome to the stream. I'm happy to have you. I hope you're having a fabulous day on the yard, keeping, you know, warm and dry in this chaotic weather. Okay. The fact that this, I guess, what was it? Based on the description the witchy stitcher gave, the chupacabra is like, yeah, either reptile or dog-like or a combination of both. I'm sort of getting, like, based on this, it kind of looks like we're making a ninja turtle. But... He's not going to fully be a Ninja Turtle, but as of right now, that's what we're kind of, it kind of looks like we're get, I'm getting Ninja Turtle vibes from the Chupacabra right now. Ooh, just finished. Check you out. Oh, no pressure. No pressure. I'm glad you're here. I hope the work day went well. It's good. On this Super Tuesday. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six twos. Six twos on a Tuesday. It's never going to happen again, guys. It's a very special Tuesday. There we go. So this is our, our chupacabra or our chupacabra. One, two, three. Mrs. Bullshit in the house two days. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to get there. Hmm. <laughs> It looks the same. What looks the same? Same floor back. I'm, I'm intrigued. What looks the same floor backward, upside down? I don't know if we're going to get. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sure all the people waiting at the bus stop are like, who the hell is this? This American sounding bitch. OK. 
because I don't know if everybody has the the uh, Canadian versus American distinction breakdown everywhere. <laughs> I'd love it though. I'm literally I don't let's see. I think it's still the case. Yeah, I'm one follower away from 60 followers, guys. So, hey, if you can if you can get me one more dej, that would be fabulous. Fabulous. I don't know, 59 just doesn't seem, doesn't have a nice ring to it. 60 sounds, 60 has an excellent ring. Let me just keep track of what we're doing. Am I jumping ahead of myself? I think I might be. Don't get confused. one of those things that like the pattern is repeating going up and so I'm just like almost an autopilot completing this pattern and then I'm like wait a second have I see see Mrs. Bullshit it's not all it's all not all multitasking sometimes my brain does a little bit of like short circuiting and needs a chance to figure out what is going on here but we'll get there We'll figure it out. We're making good progress. Every time I hear like a little bit of a whisper and I think somebody's playing a blurp and then I'm like, I think it's just Pretzel Rocks adding some random ass whisper sound to their instrumental music. I've specifically clicked the instrumental toggle button. Don't put words in my instrumental music. I did not ask for that. Yeah, now we're skipping this one. It's like speaking. The song is speaking in tongues. There we go. Okay, I was hoping that I could use one floss length to stitch all of this, but I don't think we're going to get away with that. So, wah, wah. that's all right. We are making quite good progress, guys. I'm quite impressed. I think because this, like the Chupacabra has a few little like extra pieces within his frame. It's not just him as a character because he is a blood draining flesh, I think I said flesh eating at some point. He's actually gonna have a little like skull bone situation, kind of like a cue bone situation, if you know what I mean. Um, he actually kind of looks like Cubone a little bit. So he's going to have a little bone and a skull down here, like his recently devoured snack. And then some little sort of sparklies around him. So the actual Chupacabra himself, I think, doesn't have as many stitches, which is nice because that means it's not going to take us a million years to finish him, which is good. We like that. Because like I said, this is 5 of 16, so we have a long way to go. And I still haven't finished the frame, so. I am anticipating, though, hopefully, I don't know if I have enough fabric. Ooh, I didn't think about that. I might not have enough, but because the last cryptid, the 16th position, the Witchy Stitcher actually released three different options. Um, of character that you can use to fill the final space. And so what a lot of people are doing is they're actually extending their um, cross stitch pieces 
like extending the frame of the cryptid pattern to actually be able to include all three options. And I was hoping that maybe I'd be able to do that. But now looking at the amount of fabric I have, I don't know if that's an option. So we might have to make the very, very tough decision. Um, we have, I think the last three, maybe we'll do a vote when we get to that point. But we have the Hodag, Bigfoot, and the Goatman or the Poplik uh, as those are the three choices for the option of the final cryptid. Some people too have like swapped out other ones. So if they don't like, they want to include those three options, they'll then kind of make a distinction that like, oh, it'll fit here. So I'll swap out, for instance, like the Jersey Devil for the Hoed Egg or whatever. So. Hello, well, someone in group charted a drop bear. So I'm going to swap the worm for that when I get to that. Ooh, you're working on it too. Yes, excellent, Gothy. I'm so glad. Yeah. Let's try to drop there. Oh, you're not a fan. I kind of like the worm. I feel like everybody's sort of dropping the worm. Um, in terms of like, I guess because if you've already completed so much of the pattern, that's sort of one of your last options, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Right? Slow stitcher club right here. Slow and steady, Gothy. We got this. Where's a, who are you currently working on? Who's your, who's your cryptid? I've not felt like ballsy enough to make any changes. I feel like a lot, because this is my first stitch along. A lot of people have like, changed floss colors or like made little additions or like you said charted like completely different cryptids to swap out and I'm like I don't I don't know I think I might just have to keep this like tried and true and then maybe the next stitch long I do I'll like experiment more but right now I'm too scaled I'm also like <laughs> very diligent rule follower. I think that's why I like cross stitching. It calms me because I'm like, it's a grid, there's rules, there's structure. And then all of a sudden people are like, yeah, I did this, that, and the other. And I'm like, cross stitch has rules, cross stitch has structures. What do you mean? You're just doing whatever you want. So I'm learning to maybe variation. Mmm. That's awesome. I've seen that. I've seen people just doing all of the 310 and it looks so cool. It looks really, really cool. I would think though that that sort of makes it a little bit like, I don't know if that, if you find that maybe you've had to frog a whole lot more because you need to reference like here. I like when I have different pieces that like jut up against each other. Cause then I'm like, okay, this next stitch goes here. Whereas if you don't necessarily have that um, cut, like the next color to sort of give you that indication, it might throw you off a little bit. But I really admire that. I think that that's really a really interesting way to do it. So you are thinking of changing some colors. Wow. I'm excited to see what you do then. The Ahu looks really cool. I haven't decided who my favorite cryptid is yet of all of the options. I think I'm most excited for either the Jackalope or the Loch Ness Monster. Those two are going to be on here. I don't know, man. Something about the Jackalope I just think is so cute and cool. I'm really excited to stitch him. Oh, excellent. Oh yeah. Is that, that's like your usual tactic for cross stitching is like you do one color and do the whole thing before you switch colors. That's awesome. I find I would get bored. Like I get really bored when I'm like, I've been using the same color for too long. I'm like, fuck it, let's do something different. Sometimes I even do that now when I'm working on the same color. Like as long as my stitches are all looking the same 
direction it's fine but sometimes I'll be like stitching like this and then I'll be like now nah, I'm bored and I'll start going like this and I'll be like nah I'll do a little bit of this just to like switch it up because yeah I don't know you gotta make your own fun as long as it looks like you know as long as it doesn't mess with the flow of the stitches in the long run I made that mistake but now I know to make all of my crosses kind of go the same direction which I didn't before when I first started out but that's really cool I think that's a clever way of doing that if you didn't get bored like me <laughs> oh wow oh that's gonna be so satisfying when you fill in the colors that's gonna be so cool I see what you mean like the idea oh <laughs> I like See, I think this is what, this must be what the visual ASMR tag means. Because the thought of like you making all the black work and then slowly filling in all of the colors of the stained glass, like that just visually just brings me so much joy and I'm not even looking at it. I'm just picturing it and I'm like, that's going to be so fucking satisfying. <laughs> Love that. How many whips do you have on the go? I got two right now. Yeah, I think just two. I'm like, oh shit, how many? Nope, just two right now. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to like not have multiple things on the go because that could get out of hand. But. I know, oh, 15. <laughs> Damn. Hey man, no judgment. <laughs> Yeah, I have like a massive to-do list, but I haven't actually started any of them. I have like a two-stitch list, but none of them are, there's only two that are currently works in progress. How do you store them all? I'm really interested because like I have a few options, but I really want to get some of those, um, like cross like those vinyl fronted like cross stitching bags just to like stoosh everything in because right now they're kind of just like chilling out in the open on my desk yeah 100 percent. yes please yeah post those links yes like i want to see them oh i put this in the wrong spot I got scared. I thought I did something that I didn't actually do. Let me see this. Whoa. That's going to be stained glass. That's wild. I love this. And also, I'm going to give you, let me make sure I'm on the right account. I'm going to give you a follow because I want to see this progress. I'm so excited for you. Yes. That's amazing. Mmm. I think that's the thing, like, you almost have to, like, when you're doing big projects, I can see that, like, I get why people have big whip piles, especially, like, if some of them are presents and some of them are personal projects and some of them are massive personal projects like that. Like, you kind of want to take breaks and switch it up and things. Yeah. 
I guess that's a good way. Like if you are doing sort of the the color blocking technique where you just do all one color and then switch, I guess a way to, if you do get bored of that, you can just swap projects as opposed to swapping colors, right? So that is an option. Hoo -hoo. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm like thinking of excuses to just like start more projects. To be fair, I think because I've been, because um, I've been doing a lot of things off stream to sort of get ready for stream in terms of cross stitching and needle felting, I've not like had time to dabble in my other projects. So one of the projects I have ongoing has just kind of been chilling for a minute. So I might have to take some time and actually work on it. I saw it's like a character as well. Let me just, let me, let me click on this again. Athras. Okay, yeah, so I was just thinking, oh, is this from a game? And then I just saw the hashtag World of Warcraft. That was really cool. I love that. Like the fact, like, I don't think I realized like how geeky and nerdy and cool like cross-stitching communities are. Cause like, you know, when you, like, I started cross-stitching and then you see that there's, like, a lot of more traditional classical cross-stitch, especially in, like, the magazines and things, and now I've, like, found alternative cross-stitching communities, and I'm, like, we're all just a bunch of big old nerds, aren't we? That's awesome. Oh, awesome, Vincent. Yeah, cool, cool. Get dinner on. Yeah, I'll pop by stream later. I'm telling you I'm coming, so it holds me accountable, so it gets my lazy ass off the sofa and onto my PC so I can come and check it out. Everybody's heard it now. All of chat's gonna hold me accountable. Show up to Vince's stream. And guys, if you want to, Vince is streaming tonight. Um, if you wanna plug when you're when you're popping on and things, um, yeah, Vincent will be streaming later if we wanna check him out. I will be checking him out. I've told him. It has now officially been said. It's been recorded. See, Dej is going to be like, he'll text me. He'll be like, bitch, get on Vince's stream. So I'm going to show up. Definitely. But enjoy making dinner. And I will see you tonight. But yeah, I, I love. <laughs> okay, 2030 tonight. Right. Okay. Yes, 2030. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I know I need to, I need to create the shout out chat function, the command function. I don't know how everyone else is always like shout out so-and-so and I'm like, I don't know how that works. So I'll, I'll figure that out, but I'm shouting you out verbally. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. 20, 30 PST. And because I don't, my brain doesn't commute 24 hour time. That's 8 30 PM. Right. Yeah, 8.30. Yes. Yeah, 8.30 p.m. GMT, British people time. So we're almost done all of our green accents, which is very exciting. But then we'll be going back to black work. But actually, we could all we could do. I feel like I'm doing this kind of backwards, but like not really, because we're doing sort of the arching the backwards um, of the chupacabra's back. But we can give him his beady little red eyes before the rest of his body has been stitched, and I think that might look kind of fun. He'll just be like floating eyeballs and a back but i think that might look kind of cool so we shall do that and then Yes. 
Also, guys, we are literally one follower away from 60 followers. Jazzy, you're here. I'm so excited you're here because, 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 look what arrived today. Yeah, it arrived. I'm trying to think how long was it? Like a week? Two weeks? Not bad. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Gothi, please go to bed. Get some sleep. New wow patch tomorrow. Woohoo. Yes, go to sleep. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by and lurking away. And I'm so excited. Now that I'm following you, I'm going to see all your progress on all of your stitching. It's going to be so good. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, now that you're here, girl, let me open it. I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna open it. I don't wanna ruin all the stickers. I love that you added stickers to it. Oh, Noong Day, hello, hello. I hope you're having a fabulous Tuesday. Guys, it's Super Tuesday. It is two, 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 two Tuesday. Six twos for Tuesday, which is wild. And so we're making the chupacabra, but I'm calling this the tupacabra because it is extra two. I'm going to open it. Ooh, ooh, look at this card. Look at this iridescent card. Ooh, not long home from work. I hope work went well. Is it a decent work day? It's so shiny. It's so shiny and pretty. <laughs> Yay! Oh, you gave me extra stickers too. I'm so glad I found you too, Jazzy. Look at this. Be kind. It's a good day to be happy. I love you so much. And this magical, fantastical tea sticker. Ah! I love it so much. I'm so happy it arrived. I can't wait to stick these on my laptop. It's going to look super cute. And you're the best. Because if you don't know, Jazzy did a giveaway, her first giveaway on her stream, where she gave away some of her stickers. And I won. I was one of the lucky ones. And so I got some stickers, and it was really nice and exciting. And we didn't know how long it was going to take, because she was sipping them from Florida to the UK. So it could have taken a hell of a long time, but it showed up very quickly, which is exciting. You do upholstery. Ooh. What are you upholstering? That's exciting. My um my father-in-law used to work as an upholsterer. An upholsterer. -er. Okay, let me. Upholstery. I feel like that would be, I guess if you've been there long enough and you kind of know it like the back of your hand, it's probably pretty simple, but I feel like that could be pretty labor intensive. And like if you're first starting out learning how to upholster, I think it could be a little bit complicated. <laughs> Yay! Thank you for the bit! <laughs> Zetas Lapidus. Do you guys know where that's from? That's from my, I think it's probably my favorite, if not one of my favorite Disney Channel original movies, Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. Cars, boats, motorhomes, bikes. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah, you never think about, like, when you think upholstery, you just think, like, cushions and sofas and stuff. But, like, Car seats need upholstering. Yeah, boats, like seats on all the things. Like, that's so funny. Aw, oh, Jazzy, you love that movie too? Excellent. You'll see that I also added the Protozoa song on there as well. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I have to rewatch them, actually. It's one. It's on my rewatch list. All of my faves. I haven't, like, I have favorite films and like favorite shows and things. And I haven't rewatched my faves in a long time. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that would be awesome. Would that be... That'd take a lot of effort. I think that would be so cool, though. Would you do... <laughs> Is that completely pank? Pank? That would be so chill. Would you do, like... They must do. I'm sure you could get a leather. Like, would you do a leather or would you do a fabric? Yes. Yes. That would be so cool. Do it. And then you could call it the Sakura Mobile if you haven't already. Because I know you're all about those Sakura blooms. That would be really cool. <laughs> Aww. Woohoo! Thanks for the cheer. Cheers, cheers. Dude. That would look so cool. The watermelon mobile. Oh my goodness. Well, now you have to. Nungday, now you gotta, like, you gotta, so then you can take photos and show me, and so I can freak out on how cute it is. <laughs> but definitely, I feel like leather is probably the best. Like, if you can get weather, weather, leather, then definitely. Just easier to clean up. You have, you have, um, you have a kiddo, so I feel like you probably want, you know, something you can easily wipe up. Yes, please. Please show them to me. Please send the links. <laughs> oh, Ms. Bullshi, I don't even know what half that shit means. Trust me. I know what they are in theory, but I don't know. Yeah. We are on a Twitch learning adventure. Slowly but surely, I'm figuring things out, but there's still lots. Lots and lots. Yeah, because Jazzy's hella supportive, Vince. We want to see all the things. <laughs> okay, okay. How's the dinner going? I hope you're not burning it, Vince. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, ooh, look at like the, the like gold detailing on this. It's so fabulous. I'm not like a super pinky person, but like I love this. I do, hang on, something's being silly. Okay, I wanna see the other one. Yes. It's super cute. Like, I love the, like, accent filigree stuff. And the steering wheel cover, obviously. <laughs> Dej, I feel like if they were in a different color, Bob X would love them. I love it. So it's like already kind of low key a watermelon no mobile, isn't it, Nung Day? Just like low key watermelon y awesomeness. So cool. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Look at that. Bits, 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 bits. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Vince, on your Discord, just make like a how-to Twitch and just have like a glossary of terms and how all the things work and what to do. And me and Mrs. Bullshit will sit there and read it all and still probably be confused, but like go with it. <laughs> oh no, Jazzy knows what she's doing. It's Mrs. Bullshit who doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> Jazzy knows what's up. Okay. 
No, Jazzy taught me. It was Jazzy and Nungde who taught me how to raid for the first time. I was like, I don't know. So they walked me through it. They were very helpful. They were super helpful. Okay, let's give our Tupacabra some beady little eyes. <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, I love it. Protozoa. Protozoa, my man. Oh, I'm so glad these are working. Brings me so much joy. Just the Disney Channel original movie realness. <laughs> Interplanetary hydrostatic. There's no gravity between us. Our love is automatic. So annoying that blurbs can only be like two sec or ten seconds long. Cause like I would have played the whole ass chorus if I could. I think it's like for DACA stuff. Like it's to make sure. <laughs> I think it's just to make sure that like nobody gets kind of copyrighted for it. But the whole song. I'm sure there's like a whole, I, I don't know if it exists. I'm sure, I don't know if Spotify or there's a, like a link. But you know, songs in movies that obviously aren't real songs. Because for instance, I watched Almost, Almost Famous yesterday and like the main band in the, in the sh movie, in the show, in the movie, um, it's called Stillwater, which I guess is actually the name of a real band, but that's not who this is about. And they obviously had real songs in the movie, but they're not like band songs. Like, do you know what I mean? So I feel like there should be playlists out there that are like playlists of songs from fictional bands. And I want Protozoa's whole discography on that playlist. Yay, thanks for the clip, Jazz. Jazzy, I hope I was doing something awesome or embarrassing. Either way, I don't mind. I don't mind looking a little goofy goofy. Oh my God, what's the bus? Okay. We'll see you next stream, please and thank you. Thank you for stopping by, thank you for hanging out, thank you for letting me be your entertainment on your bus ride home. Say hi to your fam for me. <laughs> oh, the sound alerts one does? Okay, I'm gonna have to invest in the sound alerts one then. Like I might have to pivot to that one or add that one and do both because 10 seconds is not long enough for me to experience some of the things I want to experience. And like certain quotes too are a little bit longer. So that would just take the edge off. We can do both. I think Vincent actually has both. If he's still lurky lurking. I think he has both sound alerts and blurps. So I'm gonna have to do both. Just wanna give you guys all of the options. <laughs> excellent look at those look at these just <laughs> anthropomorph they're, they're just just suspended beady little red eyes just suspended off of this well I might as well keep going I got one Nathan subscribed Nathan was my very first sub Good guy, Nathan. Uh, guys, if you don't know Nathan, I think it's TMH, Nathan. He streams. Um, he's not, I think he might be streaming right now, actually. And he does usually, like, flight simulator stuff, but he is honestly, like, one of the sweetest guys. He's super supportive. All of his streaming, he's doing, like, raising money towards charity. So all of his, like, subs, bits, everything goes towards charity. He's just a super nice guy. Um, but yeah, he was my very first sub. <laughs> so I got one so far. Yeah, one one little baby sub to join my chamomile crew. Very exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you got to go interact with uh, other peeps. I'm so happy you stopped by. 
We're gonna do another stream on Friday. Usually we do Thursday needle felting streams, but I gotta switch it to Friday. So Friday, 3 p.m. GMT, I will be here. And hopefully you are too. Thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs> but yeah, if uh, if you guys are a little bit later, um, I need to change needle felting Thursdays to Friday because Shadow has a much needed grooming appointment on Thursday. And it's also exciting because there's a hobby craft next door to the groomers, um, which is like the Joann's slash Michaels of the UK. And I can go pick up some thread, some red sewing thread, so I can finally finish my mushroom pins. Because we've made the mushrooms, I just gotta put the pin backs on them now. Um, so I will do that on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, awesome. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so I'll see you on Friday then. Yeah. Hobbycraft is great. It's similar to like Michael's and maybe like Joanne's as well, where it's uh, probably a bit more expensive than it needs to be. But I love it anyway, except for one thing. Yeah, I will. I'll do an unboxing. It won't be much. It'll be like, here's some red thread. Maybe a little bit more. I have a gift card, which is nice. So that means I can go spend gifted money instead of real monies. Right? You always do. You always. It's like... Yeah, always spend too much. The one issue I have with Hobbycraft, besides the fact that it's probably, it's like, you know, we spend too much money on there, is their music is 1,000% um, Ning Day, 100%. You're like, oh, I'll get this. Oh, while I'm here, here's this, 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 that, and the other. And it's like, oh shit, I've just spent 50 pounds. <laughs> um, but their music, so the Hobbycraft music plays like some of my favorite 90s, 2000s jams, but they're covers. So all of the music is like weird, like elevator style, easy listening renditions to like my favorite 90s, 2000s songs. So they're basically like the shittier versions of songs that like I would totally rock out to. So yeah, it's really unnerving and like really uncanny valley where I'm like, oh, this is my jam. I love this song. And I'm like, who the hell is singing this? So that's my only problem with Hobbycraft is that they have covers. They do covers of songs as opposed to like real legit songs. And the covers aren't even that good. I was like, please, Hobbycraft, can you commission me and I will sing better versions of these songs that you're putting into my ear holes. Not a fan. But... That's really cute that the staff know you so well. I love that. Like, I know sometimes people are like, oh, it's like, you know, kind of cringe that like the store keeps already know me, like know me so well on there all the time. I'm like, no, dude, like make friends with the people. Like if you're going to be in places all the time, you might as well make friends with the people who work there. Because I'm sure they're like super nice and knowledgeable and like because they work there, they're obviously super crafty and stuff as well. So... I feel like they would be the kinds of people you'd want to be friends with. That's really sweet. It's really funny, a few times now when I've, um, at least lately, I've taken Shadow for walks and obviously like we've had him, it'll be almost a year now since we've had him. And the other day, some people actually were like, oh my God, like I remember him when um like he was a puppy and of course I don't recognize these people like I we just see him on walks and stuff but obviously people start to recognize other people's dogs you don't know who the people are but it is really interesting that they're like oh you're you're a shadow's owner and I'm like oh yeah <laughs> oh no way <laughs> oh, Thai food is so good but that's the thing, right? If you're such a, like a loyal customer, like that's really chill because obviously you're gonna keep going back there then. Like I think if other Thai restaurants open up, you'll be like, no, these are our homies. You like feel connected to them. And I think that's really cool. That's how communities are built, guys. Communities like this one. We all friends and we wanna hang out and like be there for each other and stuff. 
And if you get shit like discounts, then like that's even better. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Oh, no way. I like that. Okay, got our little, got our little horns, little chupacabra. I don't know if these are meant to be horns or they're meant to be like ears. I think they're kind of, I think they're ears. I think, I think, I think. Ooh, that'll be nice. I've heard really good things about Thailand. I've never been, but I have a lot of friends who have visited there and they say it's very wonderful. So I'm very excited for you. Stop by the UK on your way back. <laughs> Come see me. Let me just check, because last time when I did the Jersey Devil, I forgot his little teefs, so I just want to make sure that the teefs are the same strands. The tooth is two strands, so we can do the tooth. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, you're looking, he's coming together. I was saying I think he uh, isn't as many stitches as some of the other ones have been, so we're making really good progress on, on our tupacabra. <laughs> that would be awesome. To be honest though, I don't really leave my house, so we might just like, I don't know, go for walks and drink tea. Like that's my vibe. <laughs> you can go go sightseeing and then we'll we'll go for walks in the park and drink tea. And hang out. <laughs> Very exciting. Has he been then, Jazzy? Have you, have you, have either of you been? Or is it just him who's been? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, so we're homebody. So come fly internationally to come visit me to be homebody with me at home. <laughs> Let's just be homebodies together. <laughs> I love that. I have a few friends. I think there's somebody who messaged me and was like, hey, like, let's meet up for a drink. I'm going to be in London. And I'm like, or, 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 or we can go outside and walk around and drink tea. And that's it. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, well, you'll have to tick it off your bucket list then. He can show you all the cool things that he saw or has seen or enjoys. <laughs> that's awesome I'm sure there's probably like tours you can do um based on the British TV that you've watched like I'm sure because I know that they do like Harry Potter tours and they've done um I think I saw there was like a when well, my dad was he never did it but like I think there's like a Doctor Who walking tour and oh I think the I think because our uh our neighbor's fence blew down during part of it, uh, during the storm. I think now we have like a makeshift one, but it can, uh, it's not like fully closed. Uh, and I think he can see him next door when he's outside. Oh yeah. There's like a Doctor Who tour in Cardiff. Very cool long day. I knew there was like, Doctor Who related ones. I'm sure there's like a Downton Abbey themed like afternoon tea or like a Downton Abbey tour. There's gotta be. Something I've never seen. I've never seen Downton Abbey. Yeah, I really watched it because my, my dad was really into it. So when I lived at home, I used to watch it a lot with him, but I haven't. Oh, hello, Bobbix. See, there we go. You've watched, have you watched Downton Abbey then, Bobek? So you know, you know potentially where the Downton Abbey themed London or UK things are. Mm. 
let us just keep track of what we are doing. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. You can come visit and then I will send you and Bobex to Downton Abbey afternoon tea. <laughs> Highcliffe Castle. Oh, interesting, interesting. Do you know where that is, Bobex? Whereabouts is that? Cuz you are also the history buff, so you probably know where all of the castles and things are. Yeah, I've been to Harry Potter World, like the one, like the Universal Lot one, but I've not, not been to any like castles and such. Okay. Interesting. So a two hour drive from London. Oh, no, you didn't learn about castles? Oh, okay, I just assumed. Just assumed that when y'all were learning about, like, Henry the whatever, Henry the 5th, 8th, 10th, 13th, um, that you'd learn about castles as well. My bad. Noonday, was the Harry Potter one, was that, like, the Universal Tour one, or was that, like, where they filmed the, the, um... Like the castle and stuff. Actually, when I think about it, I went to visit Oxford and I went to Oxford University and they, the great hall scenes, I think, are filmed, were filmed there. So I got to see that. Um, yeah. Uh, Jazzy Bobex, you've hijacked the chat to talk about Downton Abbey, which is fine. Go right ahead. I've heard very good things. I've heard very good things. Yeah, that's true, eh? Sometimes the coaches, like the buses, are a better price than the trains. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess it's probably because I'm sure they filmed it in a lot of different places. So I'm sure there's lots of different, like, tours and, you know different, different thingies. Tours and studios and displays and stuff. Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah, that was the same one that I did. I know they change them up, like, seasonally and things, like, so they'll do... They'll like switch up the Great Hall or the different events and things depending on like whether it's Christmas or Halloween or stuff like that. So Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah, they must update because I think the one time that the when me and Liam went, they had just finished their like the woodland, like they added the woods and the spider, like the giant spider um, guy. Guy. I don't know what the woods are called. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not up to schnuff on my, on my Potterness. But it was really cool. I just. I just really like because I love forests and stuff. So I just. I just liked hanging out in the spooky forest. Yeah. It was cool, too, because the ground was sort of, like, spongy. It was meant to sort of be, like, mossy feeling or whatever. Like, I think it was, like, cork. I don't know. It was just really nice. <laughs> okay, Jazzy's skipping that one. <laughs> that was his name. Yeah. Aragog. Yeah. <laughs> well, Downton Abbey for Jazzy. None of, none of this boot. None of the... None of these... No spoilers. Spoilers. Okay. 
You're like, absolutely not. Oh no, oh no. Okay. We were just about to make a stitch in the wrong direction and I was convinced that maybe I did that with other ones, but I don't think I did. I think we're fine. <laughs> I guess Liam once had a, um, I think it was a professor at uni or like a teacher in secondary school um, who just said that all spiders are named um, Boris. So now and every time we see a spider in the house, we'll be like, oh, what's up, Boris? But now I kind of feel like, because I, I don't know, I think they're chill. I'm not a, like, I, I like spiders as long as I know where they are. I'm like, you, me, homie, keep the bugs out of the house. We have an agreement. Um, so I feel like they need a new name because I think nothing, nothing nice and good and happy and helpful in the world should be named Boris. So I will be taking new name suggestions for us to christen all of the spiders that therefore have, um, all the spiders that visit the house, I think need a different name. <laughs> Poor Jazzy. It's okay, we'll change, we'll change change the theme Sid Sid's a decent name I'm okay with that yeah yeah I try to carry them outside too it pisses me off though when they then like web down off the napkin or the tissue you're trying to cart them outside with because you're like buddy I'm trying to save your life and if you keep sassing me I'm just gonna have to squish you like I'm sorry and sometimes they smarten up other times they don't yeah, I'm a fan of alliteration as well. Yeah, you pick them up and stick them outside. You go, hey there, sir. Please stop. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> At least try to get a tissue. I don't know. See, we have varying levels. We have Jazzy who's like, uh-uh, GTFO, out of my house, out of my life, out of my sight. I'm here like, oh, let me create a little, a little tissue paper vessel for you to travel. And then Noong Day's like, eh, I just scoop them. I just scoop them. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Jazzy's like, I am territorial of my space. GTFO, Mr. Spiders. I don't care what your name is. And that's valid. Oh, do they get them? <laughs> yeah. That's a fair worry, I think, maybe. <laughs> I really like, um, there's actually a Ukrainian folktale. It's an Eastern European one, but I've seen it attributed to being Ukrainian in um, origin. Where um, spiders, there's like a folktale about spiders and Christmas. How there was this poor family that couldn't afford to decorate their Christmas tree. Well, they couldn't afford a tree. And then an acorn or like a, not an acorn, a seed grew a tree in their house. Like they lived in like a dirt house. I'm telling the story very poorly. <laughs> Let me start again. This folk tale is about spiders and Christmas. So there was a family that was very poor. And one day a tree grew in their little dirt house, but they couldn't afford to decorate it and turn it into a Christmas tree. This is like back in the day. This is like back in the day when every house was a dirt house, but this was especially a dirt house. Um, and so in the night on Christmas day or Christmas Eve, so the eve of Christmas, the spiders, um, were taken very kindly to this family. I think one of them probably saved them or something. And so they actually used their webbing to decorate the Christmas tree. And the sun, um, when it shone on the webbing on the Christmas tree, it turned it into gold and it made it all sparkly. And then the family was not poor anymore because the spiders granted them this glittery wonderful Christmas tree. And so that's like kind of where the origin of tinsel came from a little bit is that it's 
like spider webs that glisten in the sun. I think I'm super, super butchering it, but I swear if you like Google spiders and Christmas folktale, like it'll come up. Um, but I just think, I just think that's really cool and I really like that. So actually I think you can buy like spider ornaments and stuff to go on your tree in origin of that. And then I think now, and then there's sort of like a thing where it's bad luck, where if you come across a spider web, like, you know, when you're hoovering or something like that, you always have to give the spider a chance to run away or else it's bad luck. <laughs> Apparently. I don't know if those are connected. Those two, fo like the folktale and that sort of thing is connected, but yeah, <laughs> they're related. You have a massive spidey decoration, Halloween decoration. That's really cool, Nung Day. Yeah, I don't know. I like them. I think it's because I'm not a fan of like bugs and flies and like mosquitoes and stuff. So like if me and homie, me and Sid the spider can like have an agreement, like, hey, you catch all of the annoying little like pests and you just stay out of my business, then we have an agreement. So, but like other bugs, like flies and shit can F off. Especially the ones, oh, especially in the summer, like my brother-in-law is convinced that the bugs, like the spiders got dumber because you hate it. Like a bug will fly into the house or a bee or a wasp and it'll be buzzing around. And then you'll open the door and be like, out you go, sir. And it'll be like still up against the other window. Like, why can't I get outside? And you're like this way. And you try to like lead it and it's like, nope, nope, don't touch me. And I'm like, fly. <laughs> I'm trying to save your life, but you're being buzzy and annoying and stupid. And I've opened the door for you. Oh, mm -mm. so those bugs can fuck off. Spiders, like I'm chill. <laughs> they, they don't make noises and are annoying. Ooh, yeah, nope. You gotta get those bug nets out, Jazzy. Get those bug nets out. Yeah, luckily, I don't know, like, cause the weather is so mild here, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, especially in Canada, like, I remember, ooh, being riddled, and also black flies, like certain ones. Oh no, do you swell up? You get all swoles. And you get bitten. I'm sure it's really uncomfortable too. Allergic reactions, like, even my ones, like, obviously, if you are anaphylactic and, like, I don't want to be like, ballooning up sucks. Like, obviously, it can be severe if, like, you might die. Um,. In your air hole closes but if you're not anaphylactic like having an allergy and getting all puffy and itchy and swolly and gross like it's just uncomfortable and it's the worst oh jazzy i'm the same way too though like if i i'm gonna be like when i'm uncomfortable for like a whole day even like if you i think maybe four hours tops is like the most i can be in discomfort and then i'm like i need this to be sorted out I need this to be figured out and I need to stop feeling uncomfortable. So I struggle with that. So I don't blame you. <laughs> Are you anaphylactic? Oh, mm -mm. that sucks. Do you need to have like an EpiPen then? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, it's scary. My, uh, my cousin, my cousin's anaphylactic. So he carries his EpiPen with him everywhere because you just never know. Especially too when it comes to like food related things or whatever. Like you just never know, right? Like, you never know when the thing that could possibly like close your windpipe is going to come and get you. So you always have to be prepared. Don't apologize, girl. <laughs> I'm like, I don't feel awkward about it. I'm like, yeah, that, I'm, like, that then takes the suckage of allergies to a whole nother level. That is, like, the ultimate suckage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, an being anaphylactic is no joke. That is, like, the ultimate. Okay. Whew. I think... We 
might need to end it here today, folks. But we have made most excellent progress today. So we will definitely next. Oh, wait. OK, what am I waiting for? Don't worry, we're still chilling. We're still chilling. We got time. We're hanging out. It's all good. I'm just anticipating. I'm like, guys, we are getting to the point where we are going to need to call it for the day. What? <laughs> Updates. So, Thursday's needle felting stream will be moved to Fridays. And then next Tuesday, I think it will still be Tuesday. If not, I'll let everyone know. This will be continued. We will finish him. He will look great. And then we'll have to work on the next one. And what else? I think that's it. Guys, we're one follower away from 60 followers, which is super duper exciting. We have our channel points. Hopefully the blurps are now fixed. If not, um, we'll have to look into that a little bit more but I'm super excited. Thank you for the cheers and the bits, Jazzy. It was super, super exciting. What else? Who are we going to raid, guys? Who are we going to raid? Who's online? Let us check. Let's see if any of our friends are streaming. Ooh, Dragon Armory is streaming. Nail Queen is streaming. Nathan is streaming. We got so many friends streaming. Hmm. Who should we stream? Let's go stream. I don't know. I just want to hang out. I just want to go see what Dragon Armor is up to. So we'll go stream them. Because I think they're really cool. And we'll see what's up. But yeah. That's what we do. Let's go raid Dragon Armory. And see what they're up to. And yeah. I think that's, that's what we'll do today. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. It's been super, super chill. We'll, we'll do our stream. We'll do our stuff. Um, yeah. That's it. I don't know. It's been fun. It's been great. I love it. It's really perked me up, guys. I've been feeling kind of like bleh the last couple of days. So I'm super happy that we got to do this today. Um, let's start the raid, shall we? Oh, Jazzy! Join my chamomile crew. Oh. Yeah. Raid now. 